they didn't get quite what they want on the so they're going to stay put for a little bit. Unless something, I'm sure something else will pop up in the middle. Who did? I'm thinking about getting my second booster. Oh, Lord. I know. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, what are other reimbursable expenses? <laughs> Just asking. I need some clarity. What are other reimbursable expenses? I'll say it out loud just in case. The staffing agency is going to staff it. They're going to do all the staffing over there. And so I'm going to go there and help them get it started up. That's convenient.
Call this meeting to order. This is uh, Thursday, July seventh. Regular uh, city, rather regular called meeting of the Fountain City Council. Um, if y'all will please bow your heads and join me in an invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this day in this community. We thank you for our employees, our citizens, and our businesses, and all that they contribute to uh, to the, the beauty of, of this town. Uh, we please bless our. Our service today as we discuss the city's business. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> we actually don't have any new employees today uh, for introductions. So we're going to move right along to uh, a bittersweet presentation if uh, Chief Myers wants to join me up here. As most of y'all know, uh, Chief uh, Ronald Ronnie Myers uh, is retiring with the city this month after uh, 26 uh, years with the city. Um, he has been with us since 1992 when he started as a volunteer. He's held every position essentially since then. Um, during his tenure, especially as chief, uh, I want to acknowledge a couple things that, that I know we are all very proud of. Um, paying attention to the staffing of the fire department and getting, making sure that we are appropriately staffed for our needs. Uh, decreased in spot response times, I believe, every year that he's been, that he's been chief which resulted in us getting a, an improved ISO rating, uh, which uh, points to a very uh, safe community for our, for our residents, uh, and also preliminary planning for, for Station 3 uh, in, in the coming years. Um, but most importantly, I think, uh, there are, in my view, there are three very important jobs that a fire chief does. One is to get our guys home every day. Second is to get himself home. And third is to keep our community safe. And I, I would say that Ronnie has done that, done that uh, very well over his, his tenure as chief and, and being a part of the team for the years prior to that. Um, chief, uh, we just want to thank you for your service. I know we've had a couple parties to celebrate you, and I know, I know the guys will continue to celebrate you at, uh, until your last day and beyond. You're always welcome to come back uh, and, and, and say, hey, um, we wish you the best in retirement, and we're happy for you. And some of us are a little jealous of retirement as well. Um, but please join me in thanking uh, Chief Myers for his years of service. You want to get in a picture, please? <laughs> he couldn't have done it without you. Council wants to stand for this. That, that's fine. A little group shot. Yeah. If that's all right, ma'am. Sorry, I just made that photo harder. Mm. All right. Well, do your best. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, uh, Kate, I think you're going to talk about our jury art exhibition winners. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for having me tonight. Um, here before you are our winners for the jury art exhibition. We had over 200 submissions, and these are the top three for adults in our student competition. The caliber of art that was submitted from our community awesome. is just outstanding. I uh, can't tell you how 
pleasantly surprised I was when this art came through the door. So thank you to our community. We have a small token of gratitude for our artists in the folders who won. And so we just wanted to give them a thank you. So as I call your name, if you're here, if you want to come up and meet the mayor for your certificate. I know Miss Monica Iverson, who did the Peg Leg Bates painting, is not here with us today. And I do not see Aldo. Um, Muzzarelli here as well, who did the in. Miss Carla Dabney. <laughs> I, just, I realize we just made it very complex in the moment. Sorry. And then last but not least, our child, uh, our student competition is Amusa, but I also do not see her with us today. We had a number of student entries, and I will let the mayor read those off sure. for you. We had uh, Amy Middleton, Emily Owens, Catherine McKay, Madison Renfro, Jenny Reams, Althea Griffith, Coralie Griffith, and Avonlea Crittenton. I think we're going to be giving these to them yes. uh, if they're not here tonight. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for uh, your time. Thank you. Guys. Next up is a public forum, and we have a couple of folks who signed up to speak today. First up is Mr. Joey Beeson. They're going to jump the order. Okay. We're swapping out. Okay, go for it. Mr. Hallworth, right? Right. Okay. Um, council members, um, I'm here to speak in favor of the... Um, the rezoning application that we've got coming before you in a little bit. Um, so you know, we don't really know what questions you might have, but we did bring everybody, somebody from the engineering company and Mr. Beeson from the, uh, the uh, developer who will you know, be here to answer any of your questions. Um, I'm a real estate agent with the Jeff Richardson Company, one of the real estate companies involved. Um, there were just a couple points I wanted to make. The visibility, uh, we've got 125 feet of uh, railroad right away, I believe, between us and Main Street. So we shouldn't be that visible. And um, that if we needed to bulk up the uh, screening, that would not be a problem. Um, we're only adding one unit over uh, the maximum of the uh, current zoning, R12. And, you know, look forward to any questions you might have about this project. We've got some drawings here for you to help explain it if you are interested. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate it. Either Mary Page or Joey. I know you both are talking about the same projects. Hi, I'm Mary Page. I'm with Blue Water Civil Design, the engineer for this project. Um, we did bring a color rendering just as an overall for you guys to look at as well um, of the preliminary layout for the, for the project. Um, to go off of the previous statement, um, we wanted to show the, the, um, the amount of screening that's existing off of Main Street to show that there won't be really any visibility from Main Street if that was a concern. I know that was brought up at the previous meeting. Um, and then as far as density goes, like he was saying about we're only one more unit per acre over the existing zoning um, and RM allows, what was it, 12? 14. 14 units per acre um, and we're far under below that. Um, we just want to assure that we're showing townhomes for this project and not multifamily. I know that was a concern. Um, and do you want? Uh, sure. Um, just like Mary and Rob are saying, um, from the railroad track here to our 25 foot setback, we've actually got 125 feet. It's 151 from the edge of the pavement here on South Main. 
Um, I've got pictures on my phone. I actually went out there and took them from this side of the 25 foot setback as well as from South Main. And you can't see, you know, you can't see through the existing uh, tree canopy that, that's going to stay. Um, now, if, if y'all would, if that's still a concern, we'd be happy within the 25 foot to plant some evergreens, you know, wall, any kind of buffer that y'all would like to see in addition to that. Um, but it's going to be kind of like a little oasis tucked out, tucked away on that side. Um, another point I wanted to make is the subdivision that's, that's new over here, the single family. Um, they've got a nice sidewalk and side that's been put in all, all along that street. And this is actually a state road, believe it or not. And you've got a chain link fence with a razor wire at the corner here. It's not exactly the most sightly thing in the world. So what we're hoping to do here is use these townhomes to act as a buffer between the industrial here and the single family over here. And, and furthermore, you can't put a sidewalk in here. So the only way that these, this nice uh, subdivision here will even have access to South Main would be for us to come in here and, and try to come up with a way to put in a sidewalk to provide, you know, to actually make it walkable to get back to South Main. And under the existing zoning, I mean, I can tell you from our end, it's not feasible to go in and try to provide these amenities and then sell a product at that under the existing zoning. So there's really no way to transform this into something that y'all, or at least what I think y'all want to see, um, and provide those. It's just, you know. And I, what we're doing here is I mean, we're the first townhomes on the Lawrence County side. And as y'all know, from here all the way back to basically this building is, is pretty much predominantly all industrial. Um, you've got dumpsters. I mean, if, you, if you're actually walking South Main, you're looking at dumpsters, chain link fence that are falling over, you know, trucks, abandoned vehicles. And we're, what we're providing here is these, these townhomes that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, the, this is uh, some renderings of one that we just, we're actually selling now. Um, I'm not saying it's going to exactly like this because we haven't actually chosen the builder yet. But these are selling for, um, I think the last one sold for right around 250 or 255, and they're about 1,800 to 2,000 square feet. And these are going to be 2,000, uh, 2000 or excuse me, <clears throat> yeah, two-story units with a garage. Um, so these are not uh, multifamily, you know, three-story apartment complex. It's not what we're talking about. These are going to be all owner occupied. These are going to be people that are going to be moving here, living here, going, walking downtown, hopefully. And um, I'm trying to think. I didn't know what y'all's questions were, so I wanted to cover as much. I'm happy to answer anything that y'all uh, might have. Um, just a little background. Uh, back in March, when we started working with Greg. We initially were looking to do a flexible review as opposed to what we're doing about now. But y'all don't really have an ordinance that allows for townhomes. So we had two options here. And we kind of came up with, we determined this was going to be the easiest route after speaking with Greg and um, Sean briefly. So that's how we arrived here. Um, I don't know, uh, Mayor, I think uh, Sean indicated that you had and again, I don't. This is second hand, so I don't want to like hold you to it. But maybe that y'all were looking for us to go back and do a flexible review. I don't. I can't say if that's a possibility because we're under contract, and that would require the landowner to, you know, to agree to that. And you know, we've been doing this since Mar we're in this since March. So it, I don't even know. Even if that would work, I don't know if we can go back to the drawing board. We've got a lot of money involved in engineering and and so forth. Um, and last, I know this is just the first reading, so I would just respectfully ask that if y'all do have any questions, that you allow us to get to the next meeting so that we can work with y'all and answer any questions in the meantime. Um, <clears throat> so if y'all want to deny, deny us, then y'all can do that next time, you know, respectfully. Um, but at least give us a chance to answer any questions y'all have. So, and, I, and obviously we're, um, we're here tonight and be happy to do it as well. So. Thanks, Joey. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is uh, Mr. Barry Woods. There. I just wanted to speak.
speak on behalf of our property uh, that we are looking to have rezone to the S1. Um, it has been divided uh, with the zoning committee uh, to the 2.3 acres. We would just like the whole property to be zoned as S1 to keep it as one track of property as far as 911 calls, addresses, and things to come in the future. There, we're not planning on changing anything in the front of it at all. If sometime in the future, if um, the Hilton wanted to come in and lease the property from us, then it would come back before council at that time, and I'm sure it would be appro approved at that time. But it would just be easier on us if we could keep it all as one track instead of dividing it up as two uh, with our other tenant that's next door to us also. So I wish you would consider just keeping it all one track and showing it as S1 property at that time. Mr. Woods, the vacant lot that's behind the old used car lot, what, what's your intentions with that? We've had several requests from different companies as far as being able to from storing uh, millings from the highway. We've had some requests for that, being able to rent that from us to store some millings from the highway. We've had uh, some companies ask as far as parking uh, vehicles on it. And, and those things that used to be included in C2 zoning years ago have been removed. So we're just trying to make the best use of the property that we can at this time. Uh, without, it's, it's so vague in we can, the building there uh, where the automotive equipment is can do automotive repair, but if they wanted to do body repair, to a vehicle, it's not permitted in right. C2. So they are renting from, from us now, and we're just trying to simplify things, uh, not change anything. We, we, there's no major plans for anything in that area, but years ago under C2, I don't know, Bill, you might remember, um, Huckabee Hound, the trucking company, was located on that lot. We're not looking to put a trucking company there, but that's how the property was used, and it's, the zoning has changed over the years, and we're just trying to comply. Is there any possibility there'll be another car lot on the uh, previous used car lot? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Not to my knowledge. We're not planning on changing the thing at this moment. Okay. Thanks. But wish you would consider just zoning the whole track instead of us having to go get it divided and having one piece of land with different addresses and all that. It would just simplify things if we could. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woods. It's the end of the public forum. Uh, Mr. Bell, your report also acknowledged John Marshall is. Uh, with King and Kozlar. I, I neglected last month, and I feel terrible of not acknowledging that we, of Michael and his firm representing us as our new city attorney. But uh, John Marshall's here here today as a member of the firm. I just wanted to, I felt bad that I didn't acknowledge that last time. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> we do have quite a bit going on uh, in the city right now. I'll brief you on some of our projects. Um, our Woodside Streetscape, um, that's the one uh, where DOT bid the project out. We only had two bidders. It was way over overpriced. Um, we have evaluated the existing plans. We think we've de uh, determined how we can reduce the scope of that project to hopefully get it uh, within budget. We're just waiting to hear back from SCDOT on how they want to move forward. On our uh, new natural gas and public works facility, we have 90% construction documents that are complete. Um, we're close to finalizing 100% documents for building permit submission. Uh, the metal building is currently being fabricated. 
and 90% of the project has already been priced and we're currently within about $60,000 of our $5 million budget. <clears throat> Uh, work should begin later this July, and we are still on track to be complete by first quarter of 2023. We've met with uh, two furniture providers and have secured all outdoor lighting with uh, Lauren's Electric. For our main street streetscape from Jones to 418, the engineer um, that is hired by the CTC, Code Transco, they've begun the development of PS&E, which is plans, specifications, and estimates. So we're, we are still waiting to kind of get their first draft of the plans, but that should be coming soon. For our interstate signage project, which we um, were fortunate to receive some state funding for, um, we have applied for our SCDOT encroachment permits for exits 23 and 26, and uh, we will be soliciting bids for, for that project here soon. And then uh, same with our Commerce Park Amphitheater, the, uh, the top, we are currently obtaining cost estimates, and then we'll be soliciting bids shortly afterwards. Um, over in our community relations department, we've got some upcoming events um, coming up in August, our national night out um, from the police department, which is an annual event, will be on August 2nd. It looks like it's going to be at Emanuel Sullivan Sports Complex this year, but details are still being finalized. We also have our Main Street uh, Fountain and Fury Parade, which will be on Friday, August 12th at 5 p.m. And then also new this year is uh, a Civics Academy, um, similar to the Fountain Inn Police Department um, Academy that they put on, but this will be a free eight-week course that will take residents and business owners behind the scenes in the day-to-day -day work to make the city of Fountain Inn uh, run. And so citizens will get a an opportunity to, to tour our facilities and, and not only get to learn about our police department, but all of our departments. They'll get to learn a little bit about zoning and, and sewer and trash and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, our uh, Fountain Inn Rotary Club recently had its end of the year banquet and we announced our Fountain Inn uh, Rotary Club Employees of the Year in our fire department. It was John Santoro in police, it was Detective James Paris in public works, it was Wayne Edelman, and in natural gas it was Michael Boone. Um, that All four of them have uh, done great work for the city this past year. Um, in the natural gas department, uh, fortunately, uh, this, uh, this for July, the, nat the price of natural gas settled at uh, $6.55 a decatherm which represented a $2.35 decrease from June's price. So that's um, a great sign that maybe things are coming back down, but obviously the price of natural gas still remains unstable and unpredictable. Over in Parks and Recreation, um, flag football registration closed just this week, and evaluations will be on uh, July 9th. Tackle football registration closes on July 11th. Evaluations on the 16th. Fall baseball and softball registrations open until <coughs> July 28th, and that's for ages 8U to 14U. Our Miracle League registration will be from July 15th to August 24th. The plan is to have Miracle League Mondays, so um, in the fall we'll have uh, those Miracle League games every Monday. And our Volley Mania summer camp this year has 115 participants, and we are awarding the Fairview Street Basketball Court upgrades project to Tenneco of Columbia, so that should be getting started soon. And we recently put out an RFP, or an RFQ rather, so a request for qualifications from consultants for our update to our comprehensive plan, which will hopefully lend itself to zoning and land development regulation updates, definitely a new future land use map um, for all of us, and we received six uh, responses from consultants and firms and um, we will uh, be talking further about how we go about selecting that. Um, the I, plan would be for you all to uh, approve of a of a consultant by our next council meeting. Um, the, in all six of them their timelines were anywhere from 12 to, to 18 months to adopting a new comprehensive plan so it is uh, really important that we get somebody selected here soon. Did you have anything to add, Mayor, on that one? Uh, no, I'm, okay. I, 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 thought no, you did. no okay. I was thinking through the process. Though. Okay. 
And then uh, over at the Yon Center, uh, later on in July, they have a triumphant quartet. And then uh, beginning of August, they have uh, a Bon Jovi tribute band playing Slippery When Wet. And uh, also wanted to update you all on our relaunch grant. So if you all remember, you guys allocated $50,000 of our ARP dollars to Community Works for them to administer $5,000 grants on our behalf to support business pivots, working capital, rent, mortgage, um, utilities, infrastructure development, and then other COVID-related stuff like PPE. And uh, so far, we're halfway through those funds. And the following have received grants, Tickle Mites, LLC, Absolute, Auto Repair, and more, Chapman Foundation, His Daycare, and FIKE. Any questions for Mr. Bell? Oh, seeing none, move on to the consent agenda, which is the June 2nd special called meeting and June 9th regular council minutes. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Comer. Is there a second? second? Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Next is unfinished business. First reading Z 2022 5 rezone on Mass Street. Mr. Bell. Thank you, Mayor. This uh, ordinance Z 2022 5 would rezone one 8.7 acre parcel from R12 residential district to RM residential multifamily district. The parcel is currently uh, wooded land, it is adjacent to an industrial use and an under construction residential subdivision, otherwise known as South Grove, which is zoned R10 residential. The site is visible from South Main Street across uh, from a railroad line. Planning Commission voted unanimously four to zero in favor of the rezoning at their June 6th meeting. Applicant Beeson Development has stated the intended land use is to construct townhomes, which are single family attached units, which are permitted use in RM. Uh, the Sanctified Hill neighborhood is across the street, and that's zoned RM. Um, while the west side of uh, Fountain Inn has seen several townhome developments, the east side of the city over in Lawrence County has not yet. Um, staff feels the site would not be suitable for an industrial use based on the future land use map and with all the residences being built across the street. Um, also of note, townhome and multifamily developments contain uh, private roads, so no city-maintained roads would be created if this parcel is developed in this manner. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Um, I've got a couple of comments on this one. Um, so I'll make a motion to uh, get on the floor for uh, approval on first reading of Z2022-5. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Thomason. Um, anyone got any questions first for Mr. Bell? If this was per se, then go in this town home today and stuff like that, could, once this zone multifamily could still be turned over to apartments or something like that in the future, so they didn't go with it or the land was sold again then. Um, multifamily district. Yeah, so anything that is allowed in RM would be would be allowed, which in uh, for us is pretty much any any residential is allowed in RM. So you can have single family homes that are attached or detached, and then you can also have uh, apartment complexes in multifamily. How many units are going in there? Go ahead. I have it right here. As shown um, tonight in front of you, 51 townhome units. I know right now what it's zoned at right now is uh, R12. How many can go in there? Mr. Cordes, do you know off the top of your head what the density per acre for R12 is? 3.3 acres. Is We'd have to do some off the cuff math. I think he Council does. member. Three point, I mean, three yeah, point six sounds fine. Um, the overall density that we're talking about would be right at about one unit per acre above what's allowed in our club. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's four. <clears throat> Go in 
is some sort of not, you know, entering some sort of agreement document, you know, restricting it to where we can't go in there and do apartment. That's not our design. And we can, if that's something that y'all would like to see, we can sit down with uh, John and Greg and, and try to come up with something that would work. Um, but like I was saying last time, we're not, that's, I've never done an apartment complex, our company never has, and we're not gonna go change our business model not to mention, and it's not, we're not, any, we're not idiots, you know, we're not going to come in here and tell you we're going to do townhomes and then try to submit a, an apartment project and, and be dumb enough to think that y'all would approve it after we did something like that. So we're, we're just, we're trying to be transparent, which is why we brought all this stuff to y'all. Okay, so. I, uh, I appreciate, I appreciate the transparency on it. Um, and, uh, and, and everything, uh, my only, my only concern still stems from, you know, if we're talking about, to your concern, Mr. Garrett, of, you know, potential future uses, um, I don't know, some concerns that were raised at the last meeting, you know, and to save, and to, to and to save also the, the potential uh, long conversation about any sort of development agreement that was just mentioned after the fact, that's what an FRD does. That's what a flexible review district does, in my opinion, from the get-go, is it becomes that 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 contract, for lack of probably the wrong legal term, uh, but that agreement by uh, the city and, and the developer. Um, I, I think I appreciate the planning commission. You know, I don't disagree necessarily that our, that townhomes are a bad use for, for that for that block. Um, what I think we lack personally is an overlay district on Main Street in general. Um, and as Main Street continues to grow south um, to the Lawrence County side, it's not necessarily about you know this potential product that's, that was talked about today. It's more about how to, what's the future of Main Street for me. And I think the way that absent an overlay district, where we kind of where we know if it came in RM, it would still have to have these much like a 418, have to have these sort of finishes, these sort of whatever, you know. We have a 418. Absent that, then the only way we get that sort of review capacity is an FRD, in my opinion. Um, and so, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't, that that's where that's where I'm at on, on this. Is I I'd still I still like the FRD. I appreciate the transparency. I understand it. It's not necessarily about the product being presented. It's about the, the legal piece of this, or the, the overarching community vision over the course of the entire history of this property. Doing the FRD would um, make the developers spend more money, right? As far as designing, yeah. so it hurts them. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I, yeah. I think if we had an overlay district, I don't think we'd have this conversation. Right. For me, that's that, that's where I'm at now. If council members have questions that they want to dig in on this, you know, for tonight, and you know, we don't need to elongate the meeting. If you'd like to, you know, kick again those questions answered I'm totally fine if that's what someone wants to do that that's fine with me um, I'm not going to stand in the way of getting your, your questions answered um, we've got another reading correct we would have another right. reading if this passes on first reading then, then 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 yes we have another reading the planning commission recommendation that we are voting on is is our and so um, and so yes there is another reading to have those questions answered to, to, you know upon approval so if you still have questions and Questions for me about FRD and my, my take, and, and you, you still want to have those questions answered? You know, you know, that's that's totally appropriate to move this along the process too, and have those questions answered. So uh, that's all right. All right. So 
motion and a second were made. All those in favor on first reading of Z2022-5 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. No. Motion carries 5-2. Moving on to next first reading, Z2022-6, Georgia Street. Mr. Bell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Z2022-6 would rezone 2.3 acres on one parcel. Uh, from C2 Commercial District to S1 Services District. This parcel contains three E911 addresses, one functioning as an office, one as an auto repair shop, and the third as a trailer sales. The portion recommended for rezoning by uh, staff is currently vacant and functioning as a gravel lot. Planning Commission voted unanimously four to zero in favor of the rezoning at the June 6th meeting. The applicant, Mr. Wood, sought to rezone the entire 5.3 acre parcel. City staff uh, recommended only the back portion of that tax map and, as it is less visible from Interstate 385 and in closer proximity to industrial uses. S1 Service District allows for outdoor storage, parking lots, and other uses not permitted in C2 zone. Um, in uh, discussion with the applicant on that evening of the Planning Commission, um, the uh, Planning Commission asked the applicant if uh, the applicant would be willing to have a, a split zone. Um, it was agreed upon that evening. Planning Commission voted to approve uh, just rezoning the back portion of that parcel. Um, but as you as you guys heard, the applicant is really not in favor of that. But the um, the question that you have before you tonight is voting on the Planning Commission's recommendation of the rezoning the back portion to S1, which is the 2.36 acres. Um, so your options tonight as council are to either to accept the Planning Commission recommendation, you could uh, vote to deny the Planning Commission recommendation, if you um, were to deny the Planning Commission recommendation, you could have a, a, a motion uh, in that, a subsequent motion you could, in the same one, could uh, make a motion to zone the whole thing to S1 if you wanted, um, but also no motion would be needed uh, to leave it as uh, C2. Let's find that last part again. Um, yeah, I think I, I got it, but let's that's... Make, let's make a motion and I got some questions. Okay, that's fine. Uh, is there a motion to approve on first reading Z2022-6? Thank you, Ms. Thompson. I'll, I'll second it. All right, Mr. Thompson. So, if we go ahead and approve it tonight, for what Planning Commission approved, what do we lock him into? Can he turn around and come right back to Planning Commission, have it rezoned as one, or is he tied down for so long? Which, so you're, you would if be... If you want the motion that's on the table, they got approved tonight. Well, this would and be then, first reading, but if this was second reading, then... And that's not what he wants. He wants S1. So with the whole right. It, um, to, if you were to accept the Planning Commission recommendation, you would be rezoning the back parcel. Right. Um, so if the applicant was still one in the front portion, then the applicant would... Um, it's, the same, it's the same tax map number. It's Correct. It's the same tax map number. You can, yeah, I mean, you can you could treat it as if it was a denial of the of the request on the floor and approval of the planning commission. It depends how you're fostering this, right? So, if you're approving the recommendation of the planning commission, then you are approving what's been done, and they can come right back and say we would like to make another proposal. If you are essentially saying that what we're doing is we're looking at the application from the landowner and we're denying it because we're not giving him what he wants, then he would have to wait a year. So the denial <laughs> triggers the, the clause about coming back for the same use, but approval does not prohibit a secondary request on the same parcel. Since you've taken it up as a motion to approve what the Planning Commission's recommended. Okay. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? But there could be a motion to um, approve as S1, correct? Yes, if if it was friend. denied, so if there was a motion uh, to deny the planning commission recommendation, you would also make a motion if you wanted to zone the whole thing S one. If 
I mean, if that was your your choosing. So then parliamentary <laughs> motion on the floor is acceptance. Uh -huh. Does that need to be? You've got to you've got to you now gotta wrestle with that one first, uh -huh. and then we are free to take up another motion on the same item. Correct. Okay. Does that make sense? The motion in front of you right now is for acceptance of the planning commission. If any member on council feels like they would like to change it and to all of S1, the way to do that is after this motion is, is dealt with, whether that is voted upon or potentially this could this motion be You can also, motion, yes, you can, can also, also move to say, amend the motion. So once this motion is dispensed with, if someone... So what about sending it back to the planning commission when they have a full board there? Because that night they only have four members there that night. Can we recommit? <laughs> Didn't know what you are showing up for. You know, Robert's Rules of Order 101. <laughs> um, you you can as, you you have the motion before you, right? So you you've made the motion, you've seconded it, and you know as as to the motion, you can move to amend it. So uh, while it's not been ruled upon, you can move to amend the motion that is on the floor. So if you want to send it back to the Planning Commission, then well, you can that's do a couple of things. That's essentially denying the Planning Commission recommendation. Correct. So you, you've got you do have a recommendation from the planning commission at this point, and that's that's an action that's been taken. So if you want to deny the planning commission's recommendation at this point, I agree with that, that, but I disagree because the applicant withdrew that a day or two later, so that's not what he wanted, and we're still voting on it. Well, I don't think he's formally withdrawn anything yet. No, we no, we had an email saying um, from the applicant. And the, more clean, more cleaner to your point, Jay. The code, I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, the code, I don't care, but I like the code. Um, the code says that we are to consider the recommendation of the Planning Commission. So any other information gathered after that decision is definitely can impact impact our, our decision making, but it doesn't impact necessarily the, the, the item that we have to vote on, which is the split zone, uh, the split zone piece, which is currently on the floor. Um, so, let me see if I can, I've got, okay, so we, we can either do, you can do a couple things. One, if someone, if someone is of the persuasion that they would like to actually try to get this all S1 as the applicant stated today in public comment, you can, we can table this motion and make, a, and make another motion to deny um, with and deny and then make it S1 in the same motion. And, uh, and that's how that, that can be accommodated. Um, that's, uh, that's a way to do that part. Otherwise, we vote on the split zone and a denial is, is a denial. Uh, that's right. So there's, really, there's three options here. If you want it, and I can lead you down that path on either of, the th th either of those three options. Lead us down the path. Okay, there's the, the <laughs> option A is the C2 in the front, S1 in the back. That's what the Planning Commission has recommended. If you want that, you would vote to accept the Planning Commission recommendation. If you don't like that, for whatever reason, you would vote to deny the Planning Commission recommendation. If you're of the persuasion that you want the entire parcel to be left as C2, you would have no subsequent motion after the denial. You would just it'd be done. If you wanted to deny the Planning Commission recommendation because you want it all S1, it would just need that additional motion to make it S1 we, after the denial. After the denial has been voted upon? You can do it simultaneously so if you want. The motion would be, in theory, I'm not making this motion, sorry, the motion You would, would be, be amending the motion that's on the floor, which is to accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission. That's probably the cleanest way. If someone's up to persuasion, they'd like to do it. The best way to do that is at this point this time to say, I'd like to make a motion to amend the, to amend what's on the table to be a denial and change it all to S1. That is, if you have that persuasion, that is the motion you would make. I'd like to make that motion. Mr. So, Mr. Clemmer would like to make the motion to amend what's on the table currently, the split zone, and instead a motion to deny and make the entire parcel S1. Is there a second? I'll 
Thomas II. So at this point, the motion on the floor is to deny the Planning Commission's recommendation and to zone the entire parcel S1. substance. Alright, is that just making sure I, because I was about to jump ahead. You're trying to change what's on the floor, so you've got to have the Thank body, a majority of the body agree to change what's on the floor. So Mr. Clemmer has made the motion to amend and deny the Planning Commission's recommendation and change the property to all S1. Mr. Thomason has seconded that motion to amend. There is now on the floor a motion to amend the original motion. This is not a final vote. This is a vote to change what we said to start. If that makes sense. Does anyone have questions about this? Can we get a flow chart? <laughs> <laughs> Miss, Mr. Dom, is this about right with they, how they You're right, yes. So, okay. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, in front of us right now is a vote to amend the original motion. You're essentially our, our, it's not your final vote, but it is a vote uh, to, amend, the, to, to amend the motion to, ch to change it. This is a motion to change it, and then you will have a final vote. All those in favor of the motion made by Mr. Clemmer, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Now is the final, now currently on the table is a motion to deny the Planning Commission's rec recommendation and make the whole parcel last one. Any questions? Well, first of all, I really don't like going against the Planning Commission. They want to do the research on this. And I would love, I wish the boyfriend could come back to them when they had a full board there that, that, that night and let them discuss it and get back to us. Um, they get a lot more detail from it than we have. That, that's why I wish it would come, but I, I don't guess it is. comment on this is, is I'm, a, I'm a big fan of C2. I know we're kind of, I, I want to have a carve out for some S1 in the city. I don't like giving up C2 for S1. This is not about the use. This is not about anything else. This is just pure, pure philosophy on that part for me. Um, but I totally understand where Mr. Woods is coming from. I wanted it to be the same. I, I, I understand that. It's just very confusing when you've got five point, however many acres it is, and you split it down the middle. Mm -hmm. That just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. When they want to keep it on one property. It's all one piece yeah. of property. Yeah. If they want to subdivide, it'd be a different story. But. Okay. Anyone else have questions? I'm going to ask for this vote to be on the record only because in order to deny a planning commission request, it takes five. It takes out of this group a super vote, five votes. So actually, five and you currently. <laughs> I'd like, if, it, if it's okay with y'all, because I I don't like where the mayor's seat in this is, and structurally. And, uh, I hope Mr. Woods understands this. I, I'd like to, to, to table Mr. Phil and Mr. Clemmer's motion. This is my, y'all don't have to agree with me, uh, so that we can clean up this language in our code and allow this to actually be a true 
two-thirds majority to, to override a planning commission vote instead of making it, it has to be at this point, be five votes including the mayor, which I don't think honestly stands up in, constitutionally under a state constitution. So if it's okay with y'all, I know we went down a rabbit hole here, but where it lands is the vote that has required to do what the motion is, I don't That's all right. So, what the question is, is if we table it next month, it next Mr. meeting, Clemmer's, will we have to do Mr. Clemmer's motion? It'll be, it'll okay. It'll we won't have to go through that whole cycle again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can I, can I do that? Can I, table the, the, I can table this motion with consent of the rest yeah. of the body. Yeah, we can table this motion, and next time it's on the agenda, it is this motion. Okay, so yes, and if not, then we already have to do this. Yeah, so I'd like to make I like to make a motion to table that. That's fine. It is. A second. Second. Second, Mr. Plumber. Any questions on tabling? You know, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? That's not it. I appreciate that, you guys. Yep. Excellent. Ms. Wilder, you, did you catch all of them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Z2022-7, Ricardo Rowe, Mr. Mr. All right. Um, second reading, Z2022-7 was would rezone 2.39 acres on one parcel. This is the current site of the United States Post Office from I-1 Industrial District and S-1 Service District to only S-1 Service District. This is another instance of a, a split zone parcel, uh, which is impeding redevelopment. Uh, the Planning Commission voted unanimously 4 to 0 in favor of the rezoning at our June 6 meeting. Property owner and the applicant uh, intends to keep the post office building at 290 McCarter Road and develop the eastern uh, SC 418 facing portion of the property for commercial use. Um, this uh, parcel, or at least the first 300 feet off of uh, 418, is still in our Gateway Commercial Overlay District, and I'd recommend approval on second reading. I'll make a motion for Z2022-7 on second reading. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Next up is second reading orders 2022-6. As I said, well, so, so Mayor, we were going to table this item um, because we have found other incidents in our code, in especially in this section, that talk about the city council including the mayor and we found we've found actually a lot of really weird things in our zoning code that need to be cleaned up and what we were planning on doing is tabling this and then coming back next next month and having an ordinance that has a decent amount of cleanup in the zoning but because of what we have going on tonight i would recommend go ahead and just approving this ordinance on second reading so we clean up this this idea of uh of how you go about denying a planning commission recommendation, so we can clean that up next month. What's that? Do the ordinance first next month, and then have the reading. So if you all were to approve this tonight, that would be second reading, be final, and so then next month, if you were to uh, take up um, Z twenty twenty two dash six, and you were to try to deny that planning commission uh, recommendation, it wouldn't need five, including the mayor. It would just require two-thirds vote. So if we if we tabled it and brought all the other stuff, it would be a first reading at that point then. So, so it would be a bunch of amended stuff. We so can this. amend between readings, so that okay. would still be second. I'm almost, I mean, we in theory, once it's approved, if we, we could go back to the thing tonight. If you, this you, is you could. If to, but to your point, Jay, yes, it could be first on the agenda. There's nothing substantively wrong with Ordinance 2022-6. We just know that there are more things that we need to clean up. But this, I think, was the most um, the thing that needed the, the most that had uh, potentially constitutional issues um, with uh, may, having the mayor's vote uh, be weighted more than the others. Is 
there a motion to approve on second reading orders 2022-6? So moved. A motion. Thank you, Mr. Don. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Next up is new business for Warren's Department Park Project Sauce Construction. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so last summer, you all adopted a master plan for Sanctified Hill Park. I have the master plan dated June 2021. So obviously government doesn't move real quickly um, because here we are a year later and we're, you all are being asked to award uh, the contract for phase one. Uh, but during that time period, we, uh, we had to have surveys and a decent amount of work uh, to get to this point. But we put the... Uh, contract documents out for bid for phase one and we received um, four one, two, four contractors the low bid was from Sossaman construction at just over 1.8 million dollars for phase one Sossaman construction if you remember was the contractor that um, did the city streetscape several years back um, they've also recently done the city of Greer's streetscape and they've also been doing a lot of other park projects. So they are a very competent and qualified contractor. Um, with the news of the city receiving two and a half million dollars from the state budget, um, I would go ahead and, and award this, but we believe that we can actually get phase two done with the amount of funds that we have. And so as, as those funds are available and as we get further along into this project, we'll, we'll come back to you all and ask for a change order to go ahead and, and do phase, phase two of the, of the project. We anticipate phase two being about a million dollars, so about the total project being right around three million. Um, we received two, two and a half million from the state. We received 75,000 from Lawrence County in a direct appropriation from their ARP funds. We received 52,000 from Lawrence County Capital Project Sales Tax. And then the city also, you all budgeted 500,000 in uh, our current FY for this project. So we should have substantial funds uh, for this project, um, but we definitely have enough to award uh, phase one of this to Sossman Construction. I'd recommend doing that. No, I'll make a motion to award St. Clair Hill Park Project to Sausage Construction. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Blackstone. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, uh, I'm very excited for this. I appreciate all of the staff. I appreciate uh, Pastor Williams. I appreciate Mark Willis. Uh, I appreciate all the residents of St. Clair Hill Park who participated in all the community event sessions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Having no other business, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. And thank you, Mr. Clemmer. There's a second from Mr. Thomas, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. Nice job. Oh, appreciate it, man. Right. Yeah, no, did you? Good no. Excellent.